The current set of federal aviation regulations that we use today, referred to as 14 CFR, are actually a collection of rules that have been developed and evolved under a number of different agencies since the early days of flight. When sustained, powered flight was achieved by the Wright brothers in 1903, no regulations existed for the design and development of flying machines. This would continue to be the case for many years afterward, with flight being the enterprise of individuals or small hobbyist clubs. Initially, manufacturers such as the Wrights and Glenn Curtis hired daredevil pilots to tour the country and advertise their new inventions to the public. These were some of the first instances of airshow performances, or barnstorming, as it would come to be known. Sadly, without regulation in design or operation, deaths began to mount. Accidents that involved spectators, like the Meadows racetrack crash in Seattle in 1912, began to cast a negative shadow over aviation. The excitement of these exhibitions continued to draw crowds, though, and the practice of barnstorming continued to grow in popularity over the next decade. In the meantime, the viability of aircraft in useful roles became apparent during the First World War. These developments drew the attention of the U.S. government. In fears of being left behind Europe in aeronautical development, Congress organized the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics in 1915. The purpose of the committee was to undertake, promote, and institutionalize aeronautical research. NACA would eventually become NASA in the late 50s. In 1925, the Airmail Act authorized the post office to contract with private airlines for mail transportation. This would mark the beginning of commercial aviation in the United States. One year later, in response to the increase of fatal accidents during the 1920s, the Air Commerce Act became law. This law created an aeronautic branch under the Department of Commerce, which would have regulatory power to ensure air safety. This new branch could test and license pilots, produce airworthiness certificates, make and enforce safety rules, create airways and navigation aids, and investigate accidents. This new step greatly accelerated the growth of aviation in the United States, and the need for regulation changed again. In 1940, two independent agencies would work to regulate aviation safety. The Civil Aeronautics Administration would oversee air traffic control, safety programs, and runway development, while the Civil Aeronautics Board would handle rulemaking, accident investigation, and economic regulation of commercial airlines. These formative years saw the development of the Civil Air Regulations, or CARS. While these regulations have since been superseded, they are still often used to reference ongoing airworthiness of aircraft that were certified prior to the laws produced under 14 CFR. In 1958, the Federal Aviation Act transferred the CAA's functions to the newly formed Federal Aviation Administration. The Act also gave the FAA authority over rulemaking. By 1967, accident investigation had been handed over to the NTSB leaving the Civil Aeronautics Board in charge of economic regulation until the Airline Deregulation Act of 1978. Because many of the aircraft produced have outlived the agencies under which they were certified, understanding the history of aviation laws is critical to allow mechanics to perform their duties. The current set of rules is broken into five volumes that cover every aspect of air and space travel. Each volume consists of individual parts organized into subchapters. Each part is made up of subparts, sections, paragraphs, and subparagraphs. The most commonly referenced parts relate to aircraft certification, which we will cover in another video. In the simplest form, a certificated mechanic's job is to ensure that an aircraft conforms to the standards that it was certified under in order to remain in an airworthy condition. Therefore, it is important for a mechanic to be well-versed in the parts of 14 CFR that pertain to certification of aircraft and airmen. To aid in finding information, it's useful to memorize the different subchapters by what information they cover. Volume 1 contains subchapters A, B, and C. Subchapter A covers general definitions, abbreviations, 
and requirements that pertain to all aircraft. Subchapter B outlines procedural rules that relate to rulemaking and enforcement. Subchapter C covers all pertinent information to the aircraft itself, including design, testing, and safety requirements, as well as instructions and approved methods for maintaining and building aircraft. Volume 2 contains subchapters D, E, and F. Subchapter D defines the rules that cover licensing or certification of people involved with aircraft, like pilots and mechanics. Subchapter E defines rules regarding airspaces, and Subchapter F covers general flight rules and air traffic regulations. Volume 3 is the last volume that is commonly used by mechanics. It contains subchapters G through N. Subchapter G covers special regulations for commercial aircraft that are not already covered in the previous volumes, while subchapter H covers schools and agencies. Regulations are written in legal language, which provides clarity from a lawmaking standpoint. This does not mean that they are easy to read, however. To aid in understanding the scope and detail of some regulations, the FAA releases advisory circulars. These ACs can range from a single page to several hundred. The most useful example is the AC 4313-1B and dash 2A. 14 CFR Part 43, Section 13, defines the performance rules for maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, and alteration. As read, the regulation provides a very general overview how maintenance should be performed and to what level of quality. Therefore, both ACs go into much greater detail about the methods that can be used to perform maintenance in a way that complies with Part 4313. Both of these ACs are very commonly referenced by mechanics. As a final note, when referencing information from 14 CFR, there is a preferred format to use. All of the Federal Aviation Regulations fall under 14 CFR, so all citations begin with 14 CFR. Next, the part and section are listed, separated by a period. After that, the paragraph is listed in parentheses, and finally, the subparagraph is listed in parentheses, if applicable. Federal aviation regulations have a long history of saving lives and helping to advance aviation. They also form the entire basis for all work done by certificated mechanics. By understanding how to use these regulations effectively, you will be able to greatly improve your skill and safety as an aircraft mechanic.